Now, can you explain uh, the breakdown between the varying traits of the face and, and, and how it is that different people look different? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a major question, you know, and, and we, we wanted to go about this um, without having too many presuppositions, without knowing or expecting to find something. So we're looking at the entire face um, as a unit and allowing any part of the face to be affected by factors like sex, ancestry, age, body size, individual genes. So what, what you see in this, in this figure here are the first five principal components. So the face has all these features, and we, we put this mesh over the face, and then we do data reduction to say, what are the key features that are independent of other features? And these are the first five. So they're in the order of the, the amount of the total variation that they explain. So those, uh, those gray faces there, are the extremes of these PC axes. So the first one is round face versus tall face. And um, uh, you know the round face is more feminine, the tall face is more masculine. Uh, the next principal component affects the um, protrusion of the face. So I, I should say first that our, our data set was about 600 people of mixed African-European ancestry. We figured let's start with the low-hanging fruit get results, because the face is complex, maybe it's too complex, but I don't think it is, uh, as, as, as we can show here. Uh, the next one affects the overall face, the convexity and concavity. These are common traits. You might know somebody with a very convex face or a very uh, uh, concave face. The next one starts to affect the uh, nose, the projection of the nose. And you can see these temperature plots here on the side, the, the colored images. Those show you more specifically how those two faces are different from one another. The final face is about the lips and the lower face. Um, so a couple of these have distinct patterns that are variable between African and European. Others have to do with sex variation and uh, just inter-individual variation that all populations share. Now you've we well, not say reduce, but you have expanded this into some software. So tell us about the software and, and uh, how, how that works uh, as we look so, at So our, our first analysis, we released a software package so people could visualize the results because these still images are okay, but the face is a 3D structure. So you can rotate the face and see three-dimensionally um, what's, uh, what, what's being affected. Here are the, the principal components. You can adjust those. You can change those one at a time. Uh, also, the SNPs or the genes that we found, the 24, and then sex and ancestry. And just to give an example of a transformation, I click on ancestry, move over to the right, and we get a more African profile. These are the PCs, the principal components that are affected by ancestry in this bar chart. Move it over to the left, we get a more European face. We started with the consensus face, or the average face across the data set. Then we can load in individual faces. This is, uh, this is my face here. You may recognize it <laughs> from being right here. <laughs> and those are my PCs, the scores that define my face. So 44 numbers, not a whole lot. There aren't infinite numbers of faces. Um, the temperature plot shows the difference between my face and the consensus face. So you can see I got a slightly stronger brow ridge, not as strong as Bruce, my brother, he's in the audience. Uh, a rounder face, fatter face down here. And um, I can also transform my face, so I can make it more African. This is taking the pattern of African-European differences that we saw before, just adding those on. You can move the slider to the right, make myself even more European than I am now. Um, so changing the average um, uh, effect that we see in looking across these populations. We can change by sex, we can include lots of other populations. Right now we have a world face space that includes 4,000 people, so uh, we're uh, expanding uh, that. When you talk about the composite face, how, how do you come up with that? Just by averaging together all the principal components. Once you get those 44 numbers, you can do real simple math on them, average them together. I've taken my wife's face and my face and averaged those two together, oh, and you get what our adult offspring, who's uh, gender neutral, might look like. Yeah, you have a metro. <laughs> you have a metrosexual face. Exactly.